for Hopi, it's gotten so brazen where we've had, we call it the white van syndrome. Tribal members call it white van syndrome. Native Americans struggling with addiction, being plucked off streets and taken to fake rehab facilities, promising help. But there was no help. State officials say these phony facilities have fleeced taxpayers out of hundreds of millions of dollars. The saddest part, many of these patients have never been heard from again. Attorney General Chris Mays and her prosecutors are leading the investigation. Welcome back to Square Off. Thanks, Fran. Based on what's alleged, this looks like a pretty sophisticated operation. Can you give us the brief summary of how it worked? Yeah, it's really outrageous, and I and and I meant it when I said that I think this is one of the the biggest scandals in Arizona state government history. And basically, what was happening was these fraudsters um, who had opened up fake behavioral health and substance abuse clinics were uh, luring uh, Native Americans down from tribes like the Navajo Nation, White Mountain Apache, Hopi, Tohono O'odham, with the promise of cash gift cards, a free place to live, um, and claiming they were going to provide treatment. They didn't provide treatment in almost all of these instances. And um, then they build access for the treatment. And hundreds of millions of dollars went out the door. The state government, largely under uh, Doug Ducey, former Governor Doug Ducey, and his access director allowed this to happen. My prosecutors at the AG's office have been prosecuting these cases for three years and screaming from the rooftops, Bram, to, to try to get access to shut down the money supply because that's the problem. The fraudsters know the money is there, right? And they keep billing these access codes uh, for these services. And, you know, it, it's, tr it's truly tragic what's happened to folks. Now. Native Americans clearly were targeted, but were they alone? No, I don't. We don't think so. We think it went beyond Native Americans. We think that these uh, fraudsters uh, would go out to our homeless population, the urban homeless population, and basically recruit people from off the streets to come to these so-called rehab facilities. And again, just bill access, and access would cut a check. Um, every other week for per head per person for services and we found that you know the the fraud was was broad and deep they would bill for you know in one case they billed for alcohol treatment for a four-year-old obviously that didn't happen they billed for dead people they billed for people who were on, in jail they they billed for you know more than 24 hours a day of services on people and uh, we think the fraud is in the hundreds of millions. It could end up being higher than that. And I think the, the audit that, that the current governor, Governor Hobbs, is doing is very important. It's going to tell us exactly how broad that was. So access is the state Medicaid program. Have they now turned off? the spigot, the cash to these yeah. outfits? Yes, and I think that's the most, in, one of the most important things here, which is we, we you know, persuaded them, and this is what we were trying to do during the Ducey administration, my office was, but, uh, and the line attorneys were, uh, the line investigators, but they have shut down these billing codes. They have shut it down so that the scammers can no longer get money. We know they were trying to. We have seen thousands of attempts already to access uh, these codes and to access the money, but the money supply is shut, has been shut down. Now, at that news conference uh, last week, you harshly criticized your predecessor, D Republican Mark Brnovich, former Governor Doug Ducey, for failing to take action. You called it a stunning failure of, gov of government. Here's what Brnovich told Capital Media Services, quote, our office prosecuted a record amount of healthcare fraud cases. It's sad that the governor and current attorney general are more focused on scoring partisan political points instead of protecting Arizonans. You took office in January, this past January. The Arizona Republic reported that Brnovich obtained 28 indictments of these rehab centers, phony rehab centers. You have 17 during five months in office. 
He was investigating, wasn't he? Well, his, yeah, our amazing uh, attorneys and investigators were investigating. We were prosecuting it. What he wasn't doing was going to the access director and saying to the access director what I said to the access director. Uh, and uh, what Governor Ducey wasn't doing was saying to his access director, shut down the money supply. You know, that is the problem. These, these criminals are getting away with this fraud because the money, because the money pot was there. And Brnovich never did that, and Doug Ducey never did that. And, and I think, you know, unfortunately, Bram, that's what you get when you have elected officials who don't care about governing. If you don't care about government, then this kind of fraud doesn't matter to you. So yes, we were prosecuting, and I am so proud of our prosecutors and our investigators who uncovered these scams and who desperately tried to get the political leadership of access to shut it down. We, Governor Hobbs and I, finally did. We got it done. We're gonna continue to watch it. But we also have to make sure that as these rehab centers shut down, and they will start to shut down as the money flow uh, uh, stops, that we protect and wrap around our, our arms around these victims, make sure that they get services if they want to go back to the Navajo Nation, if they want to go back to White Mountain Apache, that we get them there. I'm about to go to a press conference this morning with Ethel Branch, the AG of the Navajo Nation, to talk about a program they've got going to do that. I, I do want to let viewers know how they can get help if they know about or suspect rehab fraud. There is a state hotline for people affected by rehab fraud. Dial 211, press 7 for help. Uh, I want to move on now and turn to the state budget. In a letter, letter to the governor and legislature before the budget was passed and signed, you threatened to file a lawsuit if your office didn't get the money you thought it needed. You warned your consumer division could lose 13 lawyers. Is that threat off the table? Did your office get the money it wanted? Well, we did not get the money we needed. Um, and so, you know, I was not a fan of this budget. I think it, it fell far short of what it needed to do. Uh, my office actually took a budget cut, Bram. And at a time when we are fight on the front lines of fighting the fentanyl crisis, going after the drug cartels, protecting our elderly from elder abuse, uh, and uh, protecting our water supplies, uh, you know, making sure that consumers are protected from, from uh, unfair mergers, we needed that money. Our state agencies needed that money. But what, it, what they did instead was they, they passed a pork-laden budget um, and they also failed to address the out of control universal uh, voucher program, which is sucking up $300 million, going to $500 million soon, going to a billion dollars soon. I, don't, I think they, they missed a huge opportunity. To be clear, was it a cut or just based on an inflation adjusted, well, on an inflation adjusted basis? It was a, we had cuts in certain uh, parts of our office. But all agencies appeared to take yeah, similar th cuts. There was they say there wasn't much money for on, to increase ongoing funding. Rate. Well, that's baloney. There was enough money for you know a whole lot of pet projects. I mean, we you know I was born and raised in Prescott. I love the Prescott Rodeo. The Prescott Rodeo got fifteen million dollars, but my office took a cut when we're trying to fight the drug cartels and we're trying to fight the fentanyl crisis. Um, so no, I'm not a fan of this budget. I think they should have done better. They could have done better. They gave up six weeks early um, and went home, or well, they haven't gone. They're home on yet. vacation. They're, they're on vacation, I guess. They get, get, I mean, come on. You know, we we have big needs in this state, and and I hope they do better next year. Okay. Are you going to file a lawsuit though? No, I don't. I don't anticipate doing that. But because one of the things that they didn't do that I that I really was going to file a lawsuit over was they were going to. It looked like they were going to try to sweep the opioid funding that my office. Uh, must direct pursuant to a settlement agreement that opioid funding funding is, is going to be uh, uh, sort of directed at uh, treatment of our fentanyl crisis, drug treatment, uh, addiction treatment. They were going to try to sweep that. I had to protect that money. So many Democrats were upset, as you were, that nothing was done to rein in uh, spending on school vouchers, which is unbudgeted. Uh, they 
direct a lot of their anger at Governor Hobbs for not doing, doing anything. Should she have done more in budget negotiations to try to rein that spending in? I mean, I think both sides should have done more. You know, the, the, this is, I mean, I don't think it's too much to, to compare uh, the universal voucher program to alt fuels. Those of us who are old enough to remember that scandal. year old scandal. Yeah, well, I mean, this is where that is headed. We're looking at 500 million going to a billion dollars. This is taxpayer money that is now going to private schools like Brophy and Xavier and Phoenix Country Day School and All Saints. This is money being used by wealthy parents for their kids to go to private schools. That's not what it was designed to do. It was originally going to be a $30 million program. Now it's sitting above $300 million. You sound like a governor there. <laughs> Well, the, you've, been, mean, you've been getting ding, okay, two conservative commentators, Bob Robb and Phil Boas. Uh, they say, you seem to think AG stands for almost governor or already governor. I don't think, I don't think so. Look, I, there, there are, uh, I obviously have strong feelings about our, our budget, I, and I, I have strong feelings uh, against fraud. And I will say, I will say this on your program, I haven't said it anywhere else, but we're gonna be looking at fraud, waste and abuse in the Universal Voucher Program. Um, we're gonna take a hard look at this program and see, you know, clearly um, w there's, there's evidence of that already. Um, and what in, evidence? Uh, I think in, in audits that have been done in the past by the Department of Education. And so we need to, you know, look, there are no controls on this program, there's no accountability, and they are spending hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayer money, and that needs to be looked at. And I'm the state's top law enforcement officer, and I think it's my responsibility to do that. And in that role, uh, what Bob Robb and Phil Ball has questioned, or Bob, Bob Robb in particular, was you're, you're butting in uh, to the Department of Water Resources and their, how they're approaching uh, the management of our water supply. That's director yeah. reports to the governor. Yes, you true. are uh, would represent the agency. No, actually, I don't. Would you? A you would BWR not? is actually one of the agencies that the attorney general does not represent. Well, is that best left to the governor to decide whether her D a water resources director is doing the right thing? Uh, if the, the department, if the water department of water resources was following the law, I would say yes. But I don't believe that the department of water resources for the l several decades now especially the last decade, has been following the law. And I wrote a letter, as you know, to uh, the director of DWR uh, saying, look, you are required under the groundwater laws that were actually written and passed by Bruce Babbitt 43 years ago to study our, our water aquifers and to uh, cr periodically and to create new AMAs or INAs if necessary in rural Arizona, which are under great duress. Bram, do you know that ZWR has only done two studies, two such studies over the last 43 years? Two. In fact, I do know that, yes. Um, that is not periodic, okay? I think it is clear that that is not periodic and that needs, and, and as the state's top law enforcement officer, it's my job to enforce the law even if that's water law. Well, since you want to make some news about uh, vouchers, and I'm not <laughs> going to stop you, uh, have you assigned uh, lawyers to this already, investigators to this? Uh, we're, we're taking a look at it internally to decide where, who should, who should uh, do this. But yeah, we're starting to look at it. We've had a couple of meetings about so, it. I have had a couple of meetings about it. I'll make sure I understand what look at it means. Is that a commitment to investigate, or are you deciding whether to investigate? Uh, it's a commitment to investigate. Absolutely. Attorney General Chris Mays, thanks so much for joining us. I do 